Welcome to uh, the first edition, first episode of A Noise Up Show, a revival of which we decided last week, we decided, well, we used to quite enjoy doing this on the radio on Leith FM, which is no more, and the legacy station might not be there much longer either. Um, we're going to have a little look at the papers, have a wee bit of a rant, and see how this goes. I, um, what did you start with, Phil? What were your first thoughts? Are you going to get tore into the budget? Well, actually, just a wee topical one, just a, a very quick and dismissive one, and it's it's the esteemed British and Scottish Labour Party, and its gutless and contemptible way of, uh, as you've gone about, getting concessions so that they abstain on the work workfare, fair. they abstain on Iraq, um, the abstain is the well take the AB off and they, well they are stained with blood all over and abstained on nuclear weapons contemptible disgusting really you know well, they've, they've abstained on the law change the retrospective yeah. law change for warfare oh, rip warfare. It, rip it, warfare. yeah yeah ripping sorry off. Freudian slip there it's warfare, a bit warfare, bit, yeah. warfare warfare same difference um, they abstained on the bedroom tax yeah and the Scottish Parliament they abstained, uh, abstained on Iraq. Yeah. And what was the other one? The other one's tried it. You sure it's not full of Catholic priests who are used to a bit of abstention? Well, some of them are. Well, not abstention. Uh, oh, well, that's another little one. Yeah, if you talk about that, with the, the whole carrying on with the Catholic Church. Um, what, you know, what, what is going on? we can leave that to after the budget. What is going on? I mean, have they bought into this jam tomorrow thing? I mean, Duncan Hollisall did a piece which was well reasoned and, you know, gave the reasons for the abstention on the workfare in order to get concessions that nobody's heard of. I mean, are, are they, is there no, their imagination? Are, well, are there no spin doctors in the Labour Party that should have been standing Simon up there Pierre. screaming from the rooftops, we abstained because we're getting this, we're getting that? Spin doctors are all doing a Kylie Minogue, what, spinning around. What is the point? of having people in Parliament mm. who don't vote. Yeah. Because an abstention is essentially a yes vote. Well, it is. 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 It allows the government to get to its own way. You have to, well, the whole point is they're scared of the day that's never come. Um, they don't want to say anything in case they upset somebody. They're obsessed with polls that, that are a load of rubbish anyway. I mean, I'll tell you, yesterday I went to see the Spirit of 45. Um, you okay. have to which, have which, a definitive which, difference between you and the other party. And the bit I seen was everybody loved Winston, right? Oh, Winnie, Winnie Churchill. And it showed him when he was on the on his top thumping after and out at a huge rally. And then he stopped. Why? They all started to, he just got them through the war and they all thought that was great. But when it came to domestic politics, they booed him, they jeered him. Winston and the rest just packed up. And a huge thing in All right, anyway, this Spirit of 45 is the latest movie by the famous Ken, Ken, Ken Loach. Loach. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it shows why we have a welfare state um, and why we're going back to pre-1945, where they're pushing us back to the 20s and 30s um, is, and how garbage. Is there are. some sort of social memory loss? I mean, uh, effectively, the, it's called greed. The, the welfare state was a deal. Mm. We're going to send millions of, out, of you out there to die. Mm. So when you come back, we're going to look after you. Yeah. Now, basically, all the major parties were on board for that in the 40s and 50s, right? That, Inclu that, including... That was, a, that, that was a legacy from what had happened with the First World War. Yeah. Well, Ho it, you know, it was homes for heroes, so land for heroes. So what's that? It's what, 20, 20 years a generation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 21 years between two wars. Aren't right. It? So we're looking at, what, three generations? Since then. Right? So does it take three generations to forget why we did good, good stuff? Mm. Or does it just take three generations to wipe out anybody with principle in Parliament? Can I just point out something? That, it may sound off, off, off the point, but to me, it, it, it's, it's, it's about war. I remember growing up in the 50s, I um, was told that we won the war. And it had to be won because of Hitler. Da, da, da. And the important thing was we won the war and Germany lost it. And then in the 60s, I went to Germany to work. And they were just so much richer than the Scotland I knew. And it was like going, that left me confused. Totally, I've never been able, able to reconcile that. that. That was essentially because our American cousins, our major allies, the lapdog for whom we are, 
didn't write off any of the loans. We've been paying America. We probably still are paying America. We've just fin apparently we've just finished up finished paying off the Marshall loans. The Americans made up a fortune out of us. No, the Marshall money went to Germany. No, the money went to Germany. Oh. But like the underpinning of it. I mean, yeah. we've, been, we've been paying we've for been paying that. Yeah. Yeah. As part of Just because it, 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 someone else mentioned it on the radio in the context of Iraq, I think it was. You know, people were summing up Iraq. I have to say, um, hands, you know, clap, clap hands. Well done to the, the Matthew Wright, the right stuff. Was it called the right stuff? On um, Channel Four in the mornings, weekday mornings, he takes big risks, takes lots of people in, and discusses big issues. And they, they take, you know, it's extended over an hour and a half. And I think it was a, a strong critique of uh, the Iraq War this week. I mean, we're not talking uh, times level viewers. We're talking a middle, mm. middle, in, middle educated viewers that watch it. So we, I, but, I, but we are, we are getting. Them. I mean, we have all this access to knowledge, but we're getting more and more ignorant because you teach. I mean, it's it's from kids. You get them at kids, and if you look at what Gove's doing, um, which is to take out all learning about social history. I mean, not just anything to do with socialism or or anything like that or labour movements, but you know, Florence Nightingale, all that, to, and it will just be kings, battles, more kings, and more battles, and being Brits and standing like morons and not allowed to get killed. So people won't have a clue of what's going on, and unless you know, you can't find it. You know, what, you have to. What is know what's really, on. really scary is we've been, our generation, have been getting fed this bullshit through newspapers, which was our only source of information mm. until the internet came along. We've been getting fed this for most of our lives. It's only recently that it was we were given the ability to resource information ourselves. And that's gradually being eroded. Well, see, I think that's going to be the major change. I mean, the, the we've had the, we've had Levison, McCluskey. This is it's all gone already. It's yesterday's fucking push. Well, this is what they, this There's is what they want. this is what they want to do with the newspapers. Um, this whole idea of making them accountable. And if you have a look, all the major parties um, have got their little cobble together, apparently in Ed Miliband's flat or house or whatever office, uh, to the early hours of the morning, um, where it means this will need to be registered. This time, well, like all these. What we do, whatever you do, well, it, I don't, it's, well, I it's don't to control about information. It. They made it far more complicated than it should have been. Yeah. It was about ordinary people having recourse. Yeah. So basically, they should have turned around the newspapers and said, right, these people take you to court, you pay for it. If they don't have the finances, you pay for it. Yeah. Uh -huh. This does not include politicians, owners of newspapers, da 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 da. Mm. People in power who have a social responsibility are not included in this. This is ordinary members of the public. That's it. Yeah. Finish. Just well, well, how you, you can still, you can still How do you print. define that, of course? But this is an opportunity yeah. for those, as such as those, the establishment, to control all information, to control what they would classify as subversive information or useful information mm. for people out there. Um, I mean, they have been prosecuting, charging and prosecuting News International and other papers with illegalities. But no, but all these things are illegal nobody, anyway. They don't nobody need Nobody made this. the point. Oh. I mean, I watched the telly all week last week. That guy from the deputy editor of The Sun had the brass neck to turn up and complain about the fact hacked off were in Miliband's office and yeah. part of the discussion. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, well, hacked you've on. been on the telly five times today. Mm. I have not seen one member of hacked off yeah. being invited into a discussion. Mm -hmm. Your owner would have had somebody sitting on Miliband's shoulder, Cameron's shoulder, yeah. mm -hmm. Clegg's shoulder, through this whole thing. So what you want is access to power for you and nobody else. So that tells you that it tells you actually that's why that we're doing this. It t t tells you what really needs to be done. These large, huge conglomerates of newspapers and that need broken up. No, what needs to be they done? Need broken up. What so needs they don't to have be done power. is these buckers need to be licensed. Oh yeah, but they need to be broken up. You can't. Oh, media, media. Of... Let, let's make make no bones about it. media ownership. They've been allowed to get away maybe far too much. Yeah. I mean, Berlusconi, Bertelsmann in Germany, um, Murdoch, and but through Fox and um, I forget the other one in America, and of course Murdoch in particular here, but also the Barclay brothers, mm. uh, Lord Rothermere. I mean, it, it, it's, what can I say? Well, look. 
here, let's look at this. Here's, here's one. I like this headline because it kind of refers back to the first minister's questions. Oh, yes. Tory said they'd given Scots extra money only for the cheque to bounce. For 100 million read cuts galore. Well, that, I mean, that was... I'm, glad, I'm actually glad the SNP kind of left the position where they kind of just nodded and we'll deal with it and we're professional and turned around and what, what they didn't call them liars they called it deceit which it was i mean it's essentially 50 million in real cuts and we'll let you loan people money as long as you loan them within the scheme that we've devised in westminster and we don't care if it doesn't suit you in scotland yeah so we can create another housing well uh, a price boom. You won't get any more housing, it'll just jack up the price of housing um, and the us usual parasites will insert the proboscis and suck out the lifeblood of the nation and people will be up to their eyes in debt and the bubble will start growing again. For what? I mean what they need to do is to start spending money because, building because affordable and, or council housing again. Because Osborne and his cronies can't think outside the box, they have to maintain Tory dog dogma. They're not the only ones that can't. They have that. to maintain Tory dogma. Mm. Therefore, they can't do anything but cut money. Yep. That's all they can do. Because that's what the Tory party want. Because they have no idea what it's like in the real world. They're not really interested. Um, as long as them, theirs, and such as theirs are okay, they're quite happy to rip out your kidneys and they'll strip the flesh off your back. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the camera's here. Many times when we just did radio, I would look at this graphic <laughs> and imagine the thing. It says here, Trident <coughs> is costing £500,000 a day to, to, to Scotland. Yeah, just what we want, isn't it? Trident. Oh, sorry, I can't discuss this. I'm going to abstain. <laughs> and what is Trident about? Is it of any use? No, I mean, for one thing, it's not ours. I was It'll be the Americans, the Americans have the key. We pick up the tab, and it's also the likes of Jim Murphy, who I should imagine has dreams as he's lying there at night, of him standing and strutting about on the world stage. Who will be murdered this week? Um, you know, I mean, did you not see Mr. Psycho during the week? Tony Blair, Anthony Linton Blair, Psycho at large. Um, he, now, didn't, he didn't get it. On good, the 10th anniversary of, of the mass slaughter and destruction, the start of the mass slaughter and destruction in Iraq, and he now wants to inflict this on Syria um, and Iran. Kill them yeah. uh, to I know, save them. I noticed a headline yesterday, the New York Times was, cri was criticising Washington. On the 10th anniversary of the Iraq war, there was a deafening silence in Washington, apparently, according to the New York Times. Hmm. Well, Blair, Blair's made the mistake of justifying it for the very reason that he said we're not going to war i.e regime change no no we're not going to war it's all about the yeah. weapons of mass destruction we're not going to war for regime regime change now he's saying well we went to war for regime the but result of the war why do they want the regime change because he was a bad man to his people that he stopped buying weapons off is that when he was gassing them with the gas that the europeans sold them and killing them with the weapons but good Job he didn't buy Rumsfeld's nuclear power station because what could he have done then? Yeah. What have you got for us in the papers? Well, I'm actually looking totally and utterly different, but it's the continuing baiting of the Catholic Church in one way or another because we have a new Jesuit Pope who was, well, Jesuits are what you would call the thinking and the intellectual part of the church. And forgetting how. Warriors of the church. Yeah, well, forget I mean, a lot of people forget how big the Catholic Church is. It's, Roughly 1.2 to 1.5 billion, literally every fifth person. So you will find every conceivable mix of person and time, same as you will in a little country like this with only 60 million people if you take the UK. Um, and he's a right wing Jesuit, so he wasn't a believer in liberation theology in the 70s and all the rest of it when he was um, in charge of the Jesuits and that in Argentina. Um, but there's people are saying, oh yes, he was helping the fascists, which he wasn't. He didn't put his head above the parapet because it would have, like Romero and that in El Salvador, it would have been taken clean off. No. Um, but there is evidence now coming out that, yeah, far from helping him, uh, he kept his head under and just tried to help. So are there, are there any more revelations about Mr. O'Brien? Oh, Mr. Then, we've got, yeah, then we've got Keith, um, Keith O'Brien, and it turns out now, well, he's been in a, this is allegedly, all allegedly, of course, okay. just in case somebody's looking at new laws for us. Right. Um, but he was actually been in a long-standing physical relationship with one of the men 
who's now accusing him. Um, it sounds like, um, and there's also grudges. Now, you'd never believe this on human beings, irrespective of <laughs> your sexual Sorry. orientation. He's been, in, he's a, been in a long term gay relationship with somebody who's now accusing him. Yeah. But the whole point is he's been in a gay relationship. Um, and then, so that now there is some thought. Uh, but he's been attacking gays. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons why they reckon they're doing it, you see, because as he was been speaking out against uh, same sex partnerships and all the rest of it, he's been hypocritical. Um, um, it's just like anything else. You know, they go, a woman scorned, a man scorned, right. irrespective of what sexual orientation. If somebody upsets you, you'll start having a go at them. Um, but yeah, Grace, big it, mistake she made. Could you call it internecine sexual warfare? Maybe, or something, you know. Um, but the whole thing sounds, actually, if you think about it, here it is, it sounds so human, doesn't it? <laughs> is, is there anybody in position of power who isn't a total toothpaste lion piece of shit? No, because they probably wouldn't have got into a position of power if they hadn't been a toothpaste lion oh, shit. God. Um, so here we go. I, I had a look at the Daily Mail paper I never read, but I know it's very popular, and, you, and you, I also know what angle it takes. And here we go. Tories poor scorn on first offender figures. Apparently uh, there have been quite a drop in uh, statistics, uh, crime statistics, again in Scotland. Uh, but apparently it's, um, it's fake, according to the... Yeah, the Tories and the Daily Mail. No. According to 24 Carat Lions. Oh, well, yeah, I don't believe that, yeah. But then it's, again, the figures, there's no doubt the figures on, have been dropping on offences. But then again, now we're now in a recession. They're looking at crippling people, taking everything off them, you know, benefits this, doing that. So people have to survive. I'm sorry, I'm sorry no. There so is no we go excuse on. to steal food just because you're starving. I know, terrible. You know, and when you consider, it's actually not that long ago, if you think about it. I mean, my grandmother was born in 1884, my grandfather in 1874. I knew my grandmother who knew, so you're going right back. Begin the 18th century, they used to hang kids for stealing bread. You used to say... Or, or send you off to Botany Bay. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a little little child. Um, doesn't, doesn't seem to have done this, children, is any harm. They, they seem to be quite rich and uh, happy society. <laughs> Bunch of thieves. <laughs> Well, yeah, we have, uh, yeah, blue blooded, blue blooded, blue blooded thieves. Um, I noticed you've been very busy again with your cartoons this week, Laurie. Yeah, very well. Three on the budget. Aye, aye. Well, they were all part of a, a main one. I just, I, I was sitting there. Uh, I mean, I did throw the cushion at the telly. It, it's like, you know, there was part of me going, "That's a good idea. That's a great idea." And then I'm thinking, "Yeah, but how's he going to pay?" Right. Okay. He's going to pay for that by taking it off. The poor, the lame, you know. I can't watch it because it takes me a good half hour or an hour to find other sources and see what everybody's saying because it's carefully, the speech is carefully designed to, to right. make, make I, you want to tell lies. But I, I just sit there with my pan in front of me and I sit there and I look at it and I think, right, he's not, he's not up in the tax for the rich. I mean, that was the other one that really annoyed me yesterday. He went completely under the wire. Yesterday was the day that the 50p tax got cut. To 40. Right? Well, back to where it was before. Well, to no, 45 pence. Yeah, That's still right. 5 pence more than it was. Don't forget, for, twelve, for 13 years of a new Labour, and they're all ranting and raving about cutting tax for Tories, it was only the last month of that 13 years of a Labour that they put it up to 50p. I know, I know. Just didn't but, want Nandos to pay any tax and, or and It kept going through my head. That was the rat with the 50p cartoon. That's mm. what that was about. And I'm sitting there thinking, and wait a minute, he's just taken, basically he's given all public service workers, what's inflation running at, three and a half, four percent, so he's just given them a two and a half percent wage cut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's yeah, like, he's going to rant. What, what are we doing? Why, why is there no mechanism? To take these people out and shoot them. Well, look, here, here's a thought. Well, because it's probably illegal. Yeah, look, here's a thought. I don't know well, about you. But we can you. change the law retrospectively. Well, let's look. True enough. But yeah. look, 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 look at the impact. Good for the goose. Look at the impact the poll tax had in the, in way back when. I, I sense a, a wind with this bedroom tax affair because there are people that are not the least bit politically aware wanting to go marching against what's happening because it affects either them or their relatives and their. You know, the ordinary person in the street that normally doesn't even vote is getting angry. I mean, the number of people... That means riots, probably. The number of people I know, they come into the pub, that I know, 
are sitting in houses with one more bedroom. Mm -hmm. They knew nothing about it a week ago. Yeah. They knew nothing about it. They had no idea. Yeah, but it'll all start... I mean, Big Dave, right? Yeah. 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 Boom. Now, he got that because his daughter stays over them. He's away from his wife. His daughter yeah. stays over them. And now he's being penalised. They just wanted to break... What they're doing is so break up family structure. Well, every yeah. single father in the land who's in a council house or social, social housing who got a bedroom for his kids to come round and stay with him at the weekends is being punished. Now, let me think. The Tory party... Oh yeah, the family of the of the sorry, the party of the family. Yeah, right. Bloody family they belong to, some swear word mafia family. No, 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 no. Their family. It's not these these things down there. But, family. At, but at what the point plebs, you mean. No, not plebs. At what point do the people The papers are gonna tell them? This is the word, isn't it, revolution? But none of the papers are gonna tell them. None of the papers are gonna point this out. Because they're all on the Tory bandwagon as well. You've also got to remember, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the, and being slightly, yeah, I'll do a joke, I'm being slightly sarcastic. I mean, what does your average British person do when the upper classes and their masters hit them? They shove their ass higher in the air and say, kick again. Or chuck the forelocks. Yes, we need to take, I mean, have a look at Greece. Mm -hmm. Have a look at the Spanish. Look what happens when you have a go at them there. In Spain, the firemen, and everything around now, and refusing to, uh, when they're trying to evict people from their houses and, and, uh, and, and foreclose, the police and the fire brigade are telling the government to get lost. They're having nothing to do when it comes into break. It's called solidarity. It's something sadly well, we, lacking we in the British. We definitely need it here. And all these swear words, Labour Party no voters that run about unity across the land, Right? We need to stick together so we can help the wee Welsh guy who's been fired by his boss. The Scottish boys will jump in vans and go down there. Where are they now? But they're not screaming about this. Oh no. Their heads are well below the parapet. But when you're talking about that with the Labour Party, and that's going on, if you started off in this cartoon, right? Going back to which I found me your best cartoon, which, which was New Labour sitting, kneeling at the altar of Maggie. And it, and that was at Grantham, where the Tories wanted to, to, as you were telling us, wanted to erect a statue to Maggie on the outskirts, the periphery. And who wanted but, to put it in the town centre? And, and then they decided not, but Labour insisted, Labour insisted they would have their, their mother, their mother, but um, how, in the centre of Grantham. But how did it happen? Um, how did the Labour Party become the Tory party? It's not become a Tory, it, it's not a Tory party. I'm sorry, it has. It's actions. I've turned it into the Tory party. Well, it's like not its rhetoric. I'm no. not interested in its rhetoric. I want somebody to stand up from the Labour Party and go, no, no, go for it. Ian Davidson, a man I have little respect for when it comes to the Indy debate, mm -hmm. at least stood up and voted against the bedroom tax. Oh, yeah. Did he? Oh, yeah. yeah. And Workfare, I think. I think he voted oh, against Oh, yeah. He, Ian's no. about. No, he didn't. He voted against warfare. He didn't turn out for... Yeah, 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 but it's that whole hypocrisy. No, uh, I know what you mean by... But they're not Tories. The Le Labour, New Labour or Labour, is like the One Nation the Conservatives. Way. Well, you've got it from Millipanda. Where right? are they? Um, 40 out of 269. This lot are rabid right-wing Tories. There's so no 20%, sorry, less than that, 15% of the Labour Party were prepared to stand on principle. Hmm. What, where do we go? Who Principal? do we vote for? Isn't that, isn't that a well, that is the dilemma. Wait a minute, gentlemen. Well, hey, well, the answer is, of course, we vote for independence in Scotland, which should give us enough of, of a cathartic, you know, it shakes the, the foundations of our, our, our democracy works in Scotland, give us a chance to have parties that actually stand for something. All right, well, there's not going to be a Liberal Party in Scotland. The Tories are dead in the water already. And the Labour Party are going to change overnight on a fucking yes. Someone did say this week, um, and I think um, perhaps it was Duncan Hothersall was quick to pick it up, or was it somebody else? But um, did, it was a maybe it was an article in Way on Wings or National Co Collective, was it? Yeah, National Collective. About that, um, there was a very good chance that the SNP party would split after uh, a yes vote because so. because Salmond will have achieved his lifetime's ambition. And, it, and the, the coalition that is the SNP, after all, you've got people like Fergus Ewing on the one side, mm. who's very right wing. Uh, I'm not sure who's the most left wing SNP member I can think of. Oh, she's already left, Margot. Um, 
But it, it, there is a, there's, there's well, did, what, what do you mean by left? I mean, if you just if you just talk bog standard social democrat, um, then it's probably someone like Nicola Sturgeon uh, well, or see, Alex Neil. Alex Neil. The problem I have for that. What? Salmon did if, get kicked out of his party for being a socialist, if you remember. If you remember, oh, remember if remember. you remember way back in the day, right, when devolution was first talked about it, the, the parliament was muted as being a shop that would reveal the consensus in the Scottish soul. Hmm. So it wouldn't be Westminster. It wouldn't be screaming and shouting at each other. <laughs> that didn't happen. It didn't have to happen because that shop is contained within the SNP party. Because you've got right wing, left wing, middle ground. And what they're doing now as a government is they're sitting down and going, right, we need policies to deal with XYZ. But that XYZ is the full alphabet. We need policies to help mm. the small business. We need policies to get the forgotten youth back to work. So they're actually acting as a party, mm. like the consensus that. No, I but, thought I'd been promised. But I still, I still follow. think there's a fifty-fifty chance that after a yes vote, the SNP would split. I don't think because so. it's no, a coalition no, no. of convenience. After, um, maybe not at the first, not at the first election, it won't. Definitely not. Um, I don't think it would. There, 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 there would be. You would have to keep uh, consensus. And apart from that, for the SNP to split, I hope not. There's no social no, democrat. No, well, right, that's in Scotland. The, the Labour would have to, have to drastically change. Um, it would have to become. God help us, a Labour Party again. Um, and you need the Liberals, because the Liberals should hopefully blip and fall off, fall over the abyss, you know what I mean? Um, that's the end of it. Labour actually needs to find out why it is there. Uh, and one, of the, one, one group within society that could do that is the trade unions. I mean, the TNG or Unite will probably give the Labour Party between now and the elect next election, anything up to ten million pounds, because their business pals are gone. They'll still get the odd few bits from business, um, but the trade unions will keep it afloat. And because it's not a Labour movement anymore, it's become no. a political party, no. um, and that's what really needs to change. And mm -hmm. sorry, the organ grinder really needs to. Well, look, gentlemen, we have exceeded our planned recording time by a considerable amount. Um, it has been entertaining. I'm hoping that the listeners will find this uh, innovation in our weekly output entertaining as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's see how we do when we get something boring in the papers. And uh, <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>